in a week's time it will be the 10 year anniversary of Janelle Monae's debut album The Ark Android. So I thought it was pretty fitting to do a, a decade later video on this album, not only because of that reason, but it is actually one of my favourite albums of that year and also decade overall. I've always found this album to be incredibly enamouring with the scope and the ambition of everything that goes into this album, to be honest, um, particularly, particularly in the musicianship, the sheer raw talent of Janelle Monáe as a performer, as a singer, as a vocalist, everything she just embodies what you want to find in a musician. As well as the fantastic performances all around from many of the people that were involved in this album, the kaleidoscopic, cinematic feel of the android just floors me every goddamn time. It's an impressive moment in the 2010s and 2010 in particular, so I couldn't not at least do a video on this album because for a long time it actually was my favourite album of that year, but it did get replaced by another album, which I might do a video on that at some point as well. You may already know it if you've been following me for a little while now. And the Ark Android has always been seen as an impressive conceptual story, narrative album, whatever you want to label it, as many people tend to point to that aspect of the album whenever they talk about what Janelle Monet created here. And even with subsequent releases, um, Dirty Computer had another concept story arc surrounding it which I didn't think was particularly that impressive but one thing I noticed with Dirty Computer was not only that I got an incredibly positive response overwhelmingly positive response maybe even slightly more positive than this album um, but people often kind of just disregarded the concept and said yeah you know it may have flaws and maybe some issues with some of the things because I was pointing out those things to people when the album came out but they just ignored those things because the album itself, the music, the songs were so strong, they were so striking, they were so vibrant and of course Janelle is so fantastic at grabbing your attention instantaneously that you can kind of just push those things aside and go, you know what, it's not that big of a deal, I'm just here for the music. And that's kind of how I feel about the Arc Android. I think Janelle Monáe is an incredibly visionary artist, incredibly ambitious and bold personality who just has these really cool ideas and wants to kind of throw in so many things on her albums because she just has so much to say. She has so many opinions on things. She wants to be a voice of reason. She wants to be a leader. You can tell that she is this kind of person, but I do feel as though that that isn't necessarily the thing that carries her music often, to be honest. It's the fantastic grooves. It's the way she pulls from these influences, these eras of music that not many other artists seem to manage to do and still carve out their own style for themselves. It's not like she's just hopping around different styles. She's not just pulling from one band and being like, yeah, I'm going to do my own version of that. She's making it her own and that's what might, makes me incredibly impressed by whatever she does. So while I could focus on the concept about this album, um, you know, the way she pulls from the film Metropolis, which is, you know, the film that um, focuses on the workers uniting and kind of fighting against the establishment. I haven't actually seen the film, I just read a little bit about it. That's kind of like a, a very uh, <laughs> a very simple synopsis of that film right there. Um, and how she kind of does that on this album and how, you know, her character that she talks about, Cindy, is a cloned robot and is attempting to get back to her own world. Yeah, all these things are pretty cool, but I don't know if she fully pulls it off in the way that she does her music because my god this album is just so freaking fantastic on a musical standpoint that i just would rather focus on those amazing things that she pulled off on this album here whether she's taken influences from freaking george clinton michael jackson the beatles the freaking beatles prince stevie wonder outcast uh, Soul Williams, um, the psychedelic rock era, any neo-soul artist you could probably name, jazz, hip-hop, the, the fusions are endless on here. And uh, yeah, she just sounds so effortless doing them all on a debut album. Debut album. This is what I love about this thing. It's the debut. The debut. She'll never, she'll never come close to this. This is the, this is the peak. 
This is the peak, this is the debut. Dance or die, faster locked inside that three track run. Whoa, godly man, oh sh so good, so good. The way they seamlessly flow into each other as well. The pace is so freaking good. The high energy of faster locked inside where she kind of takes things a bit classier. Ooh, the swing of the track. Baby. The phenomenal vocals that she brings out on Omega, I mean her vocals are fantastic across this entire thing, but the way she can kind of just like become really like, you know, uh, elegant with her voice while also being just incredibly groovy, catchy, peppy, just playful. Like I love that transition that she just manages to pull off. You hear it on Say You'll Go as well, coming right at the end of the album, just a beautiful vocal performance there. Then you've got the friggin' funky jam. Uh, tightrope featuring Big Boy of Outcast. Uh, again, one of those occurrences where if you've seen some of my previous videos um, of my 2010s highlights, you will know how much I love that song. I guess it's one of the better songs that manages to address the haters, address the naysayers. Usually tracks like this are pretty woeful. I, I didn't really particularly like it when Taylor Swift tried doing it on Shake It Off. It was really corny to my ears, even though I do like Taylor Swift. But Janelle Monáe, I think manages to make it pretty tasteful and pretty funny and pretty catchy on this track that you can kind of just ignore that aspect of the song. And we need to put some respect on Kalindo's name as well. This guy is the guitarist. He's always been by Janelle Monáe's side and honestly he's fantastic. He just brings so much flavour to many of these tracks and some of the roaring guitar solos that come through as well like on Mushrooms and Roses Oof, that blistering guitar that comes through towards the end. It's a really psychedelic track, but when that guitar comes through, phenomenal to be honest. And then the classiness of the guitar work on Neon Valley Street as well. Seriously, an underrated guitarist. This guy has been putting out some fantastic performances over the years. The frantic performances that come through on Come Alive as well. I've already mentioned Faster actually, but these two tracks have a similar energy to them. Just this kind of like schizo feel to them that's kind of like all over the place, this franticness. They just really uh, manage to uh, create this feel to these tracks that are incredibly unique. But that's what I like about this album because there are these moments that are very unique and stand alone to each other. For example, Cold War, which just doesn't really sound like anything else on the album, but the way everything kind of comes together, I think is very impressive. Like I've mentioned all these styles, these shifts, these influences that Janelle brings on this album, but you wouldn't really feel like anything feels out of place. Cold War has a very B.O.B. Uh, outcast type beat. I think the influence is very clear there, but she manages to make it work and turn it into her own, the way she comes on the track with her performance. It's a great beat, actually, as well. Um, but uh, the, the lyrics are focusing on this like idea of being lonely, this idea of having too much pressure to change things. As she mentions throughout the album, you know, on Dance or Die, where she's just highlighting all these atrocities that go on in the world and how she sort of feels like she wants to be the person that changes changes these things but by the time you get to Cold War she's t sort of focusing on this idea that there's so much loneliness like caving in because she just has this weight this heavy weight upon her shoulders to change things and I'm assuming that's more focusing on the character Cindy who is attempting to change things as well but I do feel as though Janelle and Cindy this character are very much intertwined you know you that's kind of the conceptual issue I think I have slightly with this album, like it's very difficult to tell where Janelle ends and where Cindy begins because it really just does feel like everything's coming from Janelle's heart. And I feel as though that's why I can kind of ignore the concept here because I just know for a fact going later on into Janelle's career, we've seen a lot of the things she said in her music and you just know that it's the things that she believes on a personal level. So you can kind of ignore the the character shifts because everything just feels like it's coming from Janelle. I love how we get to freaking make the bus and of Montreal is on this track, the the shift in sound here. This is probably the one track that feels the most out of place, but I fucking love it. Like the quirkiness of this, god damn. It's such a weird track. It's so, so weird. Honestly, man, I don't know how this came about, but 
I, I seem to manage to like it for some, whatever reason. There's, uh, there's too much to say about this album, like I can't express how much I just want more artists to be like this. This ambitious, taking risks, having like a uh, who cares at you, let me just do this and see how it comes out and you know, just having that raw talent that Janelle has um, to just be able to pull these things off. Imagine if there were like dozens of her in the music industry and how different, you know, the landscape of pop music would be if there were so many more people like her. It's just a very individual album despite having the very clear influences that it has. And the, the great thing about it is, is that there's a song for anyone here. There's rock, there's jazz, there's hip hop, the soul, like the, the 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 list is endless. So like you could pull away at least something from here because Janelle just covers all bases. I've noticed there's, there's a slight lukewarmness to this album these days, although I, I don't think people just suddenly stop liking it, but I don't think people seem to bring it up as much as they did back in 2010. Um, but you know, for me, it, it really hasn't changed. It's always been amazing. I've always found so much greatness coming from this album just it oozes so much character and personality that it's so hard to say no to like tracks like cold war tightrope faster dance or die friggin uh oh maker like the individual tracks are so strong and i feel as though there's this timeless feel to these songs that you know the classics had back in the day that she's obviously pulling influence from and I feel yeah like Janelle just nailed it here she mastered whatever the hell she was trying to do on the debut album it's held up extremely well for me as you can tell so um yeah this is fantastic to me I hope you feel the same way about it too so uh, let me know your thoughts if you agree with me throughout this review this video uh if you don't thank you let me know either way <clears throat> Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Goodbye.